Hello everyone and welcome to Physics 211, University Physics 1. My name is Mike Dowding and I'm a faculty member with the Physics Department here at the School of Mines and so I'll be your instructor for this summer. Um, obviously with the uh, restrictions due to COVID-19 we are not allowed to meet in person and so everything about this course will be online but that, uh, that's going to come with a certain number of uh, pros and cons as we'll, as we'll see going forward. But for this video, what I want to do is provide you with the appropriate links to our course materials, including the syllabus, homework, and quizzes, along with uh, some, some supplemental instruction materials that are also available to us. And so to start us off, I'll be emailing a link to all of these materials to you. And this video will be made available in those links. But I also want to go through the syllabus step by step just so we can we can cover the finer points of what we need to be doing and what is expected during this semester. And so in case you've lost that, that email, the easiest way to gain access to any of the materials for my course is you can go to the school's main page and up in the search engine. If you type in my last name, go ahead and hit enter. The very first link that shows up will be the link to my profile page and there I am with some members of the Society of Physics students. I'm an advisor for them. We do lots of cool stuff. You don't have to be a physics major to join so there's my my shameless plug there. But if you go ahead and uh, scroll down to the bottom you'll see the course listings and this is summer 2020. We are in Physics 211. So go ahead and click on the course materials link. Otherwise, if you just click on the, the class title, all that'll happen is that you'll download the course syllabus, which is fine, but we have more than that in the, the course materials. So here we have our, our syllabus. We'll go over that here in a moment. But we also have a copy of the formula sheets, which is about six pages worth of physics formulas and constants that you will be allowed to use during your exams. So I would suggest that you go ahead and print off a copy of that right away because it makes for a great resource just to, to have on hand. That way you're not constantly having to go back and flip through the book. Uh, we also have a direct link to the homework website that we're going to use. We use Wiley Plus. Some of you may be familiar with Wiley Plus through other classes. Uh, but then we also have a link to the D2L course page that is associated with this class. And the, the course material that we cover will, will be split between the two. We'll have our homework assignments on Wiley Plus along with our exams and any uh, any extra credit that is assigned. I'm not sure which which uh, I'm going to use for that but we'll also have weekly quizzes and the way D2L is set up D2L is a lot more user-friendly for me and I think for the students and so that's where you will go to find your weekly quizzes. Uh, we'll also talk some more about that as we go through the syllabus. And so we'll go ahead and click on that. We're going to download a copy of that syllabus. We'll go ahead and open it up. And here we have it. University Physics 1. There is my contact information. Um, now Obviously, uh, students won't be allowed to come to campus, and so um, my office phone number is probably not going to be all that useful to you, but I do 
check my email numerous times a day. So go ahead and email me with any questions or issues that you're running into. I'll, I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And there, there are going to be some things that I cannot solve on my own. And so I may have to refer you to uh, another person on campus or uh, somebody through D2L or Wiley support. Um, but I guarantee you whatever, whatever problem you have, I can, I can help you at least get in touch with the appropriate individuals to help out. Now, I will have some dedicated time for office hours, and that's going to happen on Thursdays at 10 a.m. If this were a normal summer semester, we would be meeting for about two hours a day on Monday, Wednesday, Thursday. And I know that sounds like a weird schedule, but Apparently nobody wants to meet on a Friday during the summer. Everybody wants a three-day weekend. Um, but I'll, I'll go ahead and, and just kind of stick to that, at least for the, for the assigned office hour. But I'm, I'm more than willing to uh, get together with you at a different time. We can set up a Zoom session and talk uh, if, you have, if you're having issues with some of the homework problems. We, we can very easily set up a Zoom session, use the, the share screen with OneNote, and, and we'll get it figured out. So our course is three credits. Now, during this summer semester, we only have eight weeks available to us, and that's, that's a little bit more than 50% of the time that would be available during a regular semester and so that means we need to go at twice the pace and so this this may get a little rigorous as we're we're covering this material um, but but one way to think about it is uh, for any three credit hour class that you take in the summer it's it's going to feel like you're taking the equivalent of six credits during a regular semester. And that's just because we're going at twice the pace. And so I, I really don't recommend that anybody take more than two summer classes. Um, three, three is kind of pushing it because now you're, you're talking about, um, let's see, Three classes at three credits would be nine, but then at, at twice the rate, you're looking at an 18 credit hour load. That would be the equivalent for your summer. And so two summer classes would be the equivalent of like a 12 credit hour load during a regular semester. And that's, that's far more manageable. Um, but if you, if you are taking another class, obviously that's going to be online too. And the the pace that that class is set at is going to be similar to what we have here. So obviously everything is going to be online. You'll access all of the homework, the quizzes, the exams online. I will have pre-recorded lectures for you to access and watch at your leisure. Uh, you, can wa you can watch as many of them in one sitting as you want or you can space them out. But we will have um, set due dates for the homework sets, the quizzes, and the exams. And so right here we have a direct link to our Wiley Plus homework section. Uh, all you should need to do is just uh, copy paste that into your um, your browser and it should take you to the course page for our course. Um, we'll, we'll go ahead and look at that link here after we've gone through the rest of the syllabus. But do, do make sure that when you click that link that you are accessing the appropriate course. And if, you, if you're not, that, that can cause issue with your, your registration and your access. But um, everybody should be 
uh, purchasing their their Wiley Plus access through the bookstore and if you're doing that then you should have first day access availability um, but if you're if you're going to choose an opt-out um, typically what that means is that you're opting out of paying for Wiley Plus through the bookstore and that means it's your responsibility to pay for Wiley Plus on your own. Otherwise, um, there, is a, there is a grace period that Wiley Plus allows to the students and if you don't, if you don't pay for the access to use Wiley Plus, then they will, they will close down your account about halfway through the semester and then you can't access anything until you pay. So it's, it's far easier to just do everything through the bookstore. That is my recommendation. And then the bookstore will take care of all of your registration needs. All you should have to do is just log in and you're good to go. Um, and then right here, the, the next line down, this is a link to uh, the previous course page that we saw. So this will take you back to... Uh, this page right here. And then we have the link to our D2L page for this course. We'll take a look at that here in a little bit. Um, but for now, I want to get through the, the syllabus. Prerequisites, um, you need to have taken and passed Calculus 1. And for us, that means a D or better. Now, if you have taken Calc 1 and you did not pass, obviously that doesn't count. If you took some kind of AP calculus class in high school um, and you, you, took, you took the test, uh, you need to make sure that whatever scores from that test were accepted by, this, by the registrar's office. Otherwise, if you didn't take the AP test, obviously that's not going to count. If you're transferring a Calc 1 credit in from another school, you need to make sure that that's up to date with the registrar's office. Uh, otherwise, they're going. Otherwise, they're going to send me a report with names of any students that don't meet the prerequisites, and then we'll have to drop those students. Um, so, if that happens, just make sure that you get in touch with the registrar's office as soon as possible, so that you can get things cleared up. Uh, and then the rest of this is basically just going to cover um, the, ma the materials and the, the expectations of the course. Um, this line right here just means that um, the, the 100 level physics courses, those are algebra based, based physics courses and so they don't um, apply to most of the program requirements on campus and so if you try to take the 100 level or the 200 level you can't use both of them as part of your your uh, course curriculum requirements for your program of study so you need to make sure that you're in the right class. Obviously the the 200 level are the, the calculus based levels and those those are by far going to be the better option because with the calculus we can we can uh, delve quite a bit deeper into the the content and get a better understanding of that. All right, so as I said, here are all of the uh, the course objectives. Basically, these are just uh, spoilers as to what is going to be covered during the course of this semester. And then um, anyone who also needs to take Physics 2, this class will be a prerequisite for that, along with any uh, labs that you may have to take in the future. There is currently no Physics 211 lab. Um, we're working on that, but um, there also are not any labs being offered during this summer semester. So 
that's not something that we need to worry about right now. And then our, uh, our course schedule, that'll be down at the very bottom of this document. We'll see that in a moment. As mentioned, I will be posting lectures for all of these materials. We will not be live streaming any lectures. Everything will be pre-recorded. Um, the benefit to that is that you can always pause, rewind, go back, rewatch these as many times as you want. Um, and you don't have to worry about internet cutting out or anything like that. Um, the one drawback to that, obviously, is that you won't be able to ask me any questions during the lectures, but that's why I highly recommend that you get in touch with me either by email or during those office hours, or we can set up an appointment to meet online. We're going to have two exams during this summer semester. Uh, we'll have a midterm and a final, and those are the dates. Now, I will have these exams set up and accessible for approximately, um, I think it's about 40 hours. So there will, there will be a, a window of opportunity where you can log in, access the test, and take it. But once you access the test, you will you will only have three hours to complete it so don't don't think that that test is is open and available to you for the full 40 hours you just have that window of opportunity to go in and access the test but once you once you start the test you have to finish it in one sitting and you'll have up to three hours to complete it and those exams will be administered through Wiley Plus, the same as the, the homework sets. All right, here's our grading scale. Um, physics does have a, a slightly more forgiving grading scale. 85 and above is an A. And we continue with the 15-point the grading scale until you get down to the D range. And then anything below 50% is failing. Um, I would highly recommend that you don't allow your grade to slip below 70%. If you see that happening, that's when you need to, to reach out, get some help, whether it's from me or a classmate. Um, there's also uh, the Student Success Center. I believe that they're going to have some tutoring available over the summer uh, via Zoom. I'll have to contact them and double check. Um, but again, the, the pace of this class is going to be pretty fast and you really can't afford to allow yourself to fall behind. Um, up here is the point spread for our homework quizzes and the two exams. So we've got a, we've got a 600 total. I will have an extra credit assignment made available after the midterm. And so if you if you do find yourself, you know, bombing a quiz or you forgot to do half of a homework assignment or maybe the midterm didn't go so well, then that that extra credit assignment will will help to bring your score back up. Once again, the homework will be on Wiley Plus. It will be graded automatically. So once you hit submit, you will know if you got the answer right or wrong. Uh, just keep an eye on the due dates. I also have the due dates on the, uh, the course schedule at the end of this uh, uh, document. Um, if, you do, if you do find yourself um, a little strapped for time during the summer, I understand. Um, I can always extend one of the homework assignments, um, but that's going to be for, you know, except outstanding, you know, circumstances. Don't expect me to be extending every single homework set because eventually we're going to, we're going to reach the end of the semester and we're going to run out of time. 
As far as attendance goes, obviously we're not going to be meeting in person. It's going to be the responsibility of you, the student, to log in, watch the videos, do the homework, take the quizzes, and take the test. Um, it's also going to be your responsibility to contact me or your classmates if you're having trouble. Uh, here I've got a little subsection on what to expect from Wiley Plus. So again, all the homework will be there. We'll have our two exams there. The exams, I will open them up at 8 a.m. Mountain Time on the listed dates. They will close just before midnight the following day. So they will close just before midnight on Friday. And that'll be Friday, July 3rd, and Friday, July 31st. Each exam will be 30 multiple choice questions, each question worth five points for a grand total of 150 points each. And for these exams, as I said, you'll have three hours to complete those exams. You will be required to use what is called the Respondus Lockdown Browser. And this is just a software that uh, basically locks your computer so that you can't open any other windows or browsers while you're taking the test. And so that's, that's just to help discourage any cheating. Please don't cheat. Obviously that makes for a more complex situation. Um, but this is why on the, uh, the course page where we had our other course materials, you will be allowed to use this formula sheet. You just need to make sure that you have a physical copy printed out because you won't be able to switch, switch windows in your browser once the, once the exam has started. You'll also need to make sure that you've got a, a calculator on hand. Um, make sure it is a scientific calculator because we'll be using uh, plenty of trig functions and uh, other, other notation that is best suited for a scientific calculator. For D2L, D2L is where we will be having our weekly quizzes. These quizzes will open on Thursday mornings and they will close just before midnight the following day on Friday. We will have six of these quizzes. So we'll have the first three quizzes at the end of the first three weeks of class. At the end of the fourth week of class will be the midterm exam. We'll then have three more quizzes at the end of the next three weeks and then at the end of the eighth week will be the final exam. Now I will not require uh, respondus lockdown for the quizzes. I also won't set any kind of a, a timer. Um, so the, the window of opportunity for you to take those quizzes will be about the, the 40 plus hours. Um, that's, that's not to say that you need to take the whole time. I, I just provide you that window of opportunity um, as a, a courtesy. But it shouldn't take you more than probably a half hour, maybe 45 minutes, to complete any of those quizzes. Um, you can also use D2L for any kind of communication. You can have a group discussion. D2L has a live chat option. You can also set up some Zoom sessions, I believe. I'm, I'm still learning how to use all the, the different um, resources on D2L. I've never actually used D2L in a class before until this, this last spring semester when we had to move everything online. And so most of you are probably far more uh, familiar with D2L than I am. So please 
use whatever resources are there to communicate amongst yourselves. If you want to get together in a Zoom session, work on some homework together, that's great. Um, I actually um, suggest that you do that. Um, the, the homework questions that you get off of Wiley Plus will have a random number generator. So everyone will have different numbers to work with on their homework problems, but the general solution to those homework problems is going to be the same for everyone. So if you can work together as a group to achieve that general solution, then everyone can go and plug their own numbers in and submit those as their answers to Wiley Plus. But regardless of what you're doing, uh, you do need to turn in your own work. And I expect that you will work independently on your exams. You're not, you're not going to be able to have a, a Zoom window open as you're taking your exam. So don't try it. Um, academic integrity, obviously, please, no cheating, no plagiarizing. Um, that's going to cause a lot, of, a lot of hassle, a lot of paperwork. Uh, freedom and learning, basically the statement says that you get the grade that you earn from your coursework. Title IX, um, make sure that you are all treating each other with respect. Uh, that includes me, and I will, I will do the same. But um, if, you know, if there are any violations to this, I need to report them. And then um, anyone with uh, required ADA accommodations, you'll need to be in touch with the ADA office and Amanda Lopez. She will then forward uh, a letter with the appropriate accommodations and then we can work those out. But given that everything is going to be online, um, I, really, I really don't see um, any accommodations that might be necessary other than extended time on the exams, but that time has already been incorporated into the three hours. Uh, for, for a 30 multiple choice question exam, um, you, sh you really shouldn't need more than 90 minutes. And so having 180 minutes there, again, is, is a courtesy, just so we're not stressing anybody out on these online exams. And then that, that will also cover um, any extended time requirements um, through ADA accommodations. And then um, obviously, if you do need some extra help, get in touch with me during the office hours check with the Student Success Center to see what tutoring services they have available, and then um, any, any other issues that you might be dealing with. I know this is a very stressful time with COVID-19 and having to do coursework online, so the uh, student services are still available. You can get in touch with them, and uh, they, can, they can definitely help you out. This next part, um, this is just edited from Jamestown Community College website. I saw this and a lot, a lot of the bullet points here um, really connect with uh, what it means to be a responsible student. So if you can go down and you can check off most of these as um, describing you, then we're going to have a good semester and you're going to have a, a successful time in this class. But if you look at a lot of these bullet points and these don't sound like you, then you're probably not going to have a, a good experience with this class. Um, and these, these bullet points are, are even more important now that we're, we're doing this class online. You really need to be self-motivated to keep coming back and viewing the videos, doing the homework, taking the quizzes. You really need um, 
to set up a, a schedule with time management for this summer course material. And then we have our tentative schedule. So the way I've laid this out is for every week of the summer semester, I have course content. And so here on June 8th, which is Monday, I will expect you to have at the very least watched the first video for the chapter two content. And then by Tuesday the 9th, I expect that you have at the very least watched uh, part two for that chapter content. If you want to watch more than that, you are welcome to. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to try to have um, close to the first half of the semester's content posted. And so if you want to watch this stuff right away, you know, you could watch all of chapter two material on Monday and probably get all the homework done by Tuesday. And then you can chill for a day. The, the quiz through D2L will open up on Thursday. You can take that quiz. And then um, the chapter two homework will close on Friday, just before midnight, as will the window of opportunity for taking the first quiz. Now these weekly quizzes will only cover material up to that point. So this first quiz here will only cover material from chapter two. The second quiz will only cover material from chapter three. The third quiz will cover material from, let's see, it could be a combination of chapter four, chapter five. Um, I haven't written that quiz yet, but obviously don't expect a quiz to cover something that we haven't discussed uh, by these, these uh, listed deadlines. So you can always work ahead. You can always watch the videos sooner than what I have suggested here. I'm also going to have all of the homework sets made available to you the first day of class. So it's going to look a little overwhelming at first having, um, let's see, we're starting in chapter two, going through chapter 10. So that's nine homework sets. That's going to look intimidating, but that's just so if you want to start chapter three material um, during the first week, you can do that and you can finish the chapter three material. Um, you, you can... Uh, obviously read the book. That's always a good resource. Uh, in addition, we're going to see that Wiley Plus offers some uh, supplementary instruction and you're more than welcome to use that. It's, it's part of the, the fee that comes with using Wiley Plus. Uh, but really, really the only thing that um, you can't do early are going to be the quizzes and the exams. But as far as the homework and watching the videos goes, that is completely up to you. And the rate at which you cover that material is only limited by your motivation to get that stuff done. Uh, now again, some of these, these homework due dates um, are uh, open to negotiation. If I need to push back a homework date, um, you know, if there's a, a big storm one night and all the power goes out, you know, obviously that's going to happen. But I will say, please don't wait until the last minute to get the homework done because that's when bad things happen. That's when the internet goes out. That's when the power goes out. That's when your laptop battery dies. Um, that's when you're uh, out of town and you don't have internet access. Um, every, every video that you watch should allow you to do approximately a quarter of the homework set. So if you watch the first uh, video from chapter two, check out the chapter two homework, try out the first two problems, and then watch the second video, come back, 
try out the next couple of problems from the chapter two set. And so after a few days of doing, you know, one, two, three homework problems, by the time that the homework's due, you're done with the homework assignment. All right, so let's go take a look at uh, Wiley Plus. I'm going to close out of the, the document here. And right here is the link to Wiley Plus. Now, when I click on this link, since I already have a profile set up, it's going to take me directly to my page. And so I will show you what it looks like when you log in. So this is this is where the link takes us. And right here it says physics 211, 213, 225. What does all that mean? Well, the book that we're using is used for three different physics courses. And these are the three courses. What you need to make sure happens is that it says physics 211 summer 2020 doubting. That is the course that we need to be set up for and to log in. Now if you already have a Wiley Plus account, all you should need to do is put in your email and your password that's associated with your Wiley account. And if you've if you've arranged through the bookstore for your first day access, all you should have to do is click log in and you should have access to our, our course page. If you've never used Wiley before, then you'll need to create a profile. Um, but again, if, if you went through the bookstore with your, your first day access, then you, you should be able to access it no problem. So I'll click log in here. And because I am um, the course instructor, um, let's see here. Oh, actually, it looks like I'm on student view. So that's okay. Um, so with Wiley Plus, you have a number of tabs up here that you can access. Now, I'm making this video before the first day of class, so you see here that there are, there are zero assignments available, but those assignments will become available on June 8th. But, uh, let's see here. Yeah. So we won't be able to look at the assignments just yet. But the first thing we want to do is we want to look at the, the read-study practice. And this is basically a summarized version of the textbook. You can also download the electronic copy of your textbook here and then you can save that and then that's yours. Um, you can save that file for reference and use that um, in the future. I, I do not believe that there's any kind of timestamp associated with that. So the, the, the document itself is not going to become useless later. But uh, the access to Wiley Plus is limited. I think you've I think you've got up to a year after you pay for the service before it closes out on you. Um, but in any case, under the read study practice, when you click on that, the first thing that you'll get here is the math skills. And so this provides you a number of links to different mathematics skills. So in case you're feeling a little rusty on anything in particular, you can click on these. Uh, it'll give you a, a brief uh, tutorial on these topics. But if we come up to the, the drop down menu and click on that, we'll see links to all of the different chapters in the text. Now, we're only going to go through chapter 10 for this course material, but the full textbook is more than 40 chapters, and Wiley Plus is linked into the entire textbook. So if you want to explore and look around and you know, read up maybe on relativity or nuclear physics, 
uh, optics, imaging, things like that. You're more than welcome to because you paid for the access. And so um, we're going to start in chapter two because chapter one is just based on measurements. And so if you, if you click on any chapter in particular, here it'll show you the subsections for those chapters. Um, there's some interactive exercises here that you can take advantage of. If we scroll down a little bit further, there are simulations that you can play with. There's some videos that you can watch, additional sample problems. So lots of supplemental material that you can access. And then uh, in, in this area right here where my, my cursor is kind of hovering, I will have posted links to our lecture videos. And so you'll, you'll log into Wiley Plus. You'll, you'll come to, uh, um, in fact, I, I don't think it matters what chapter you click on. The instructor content that I post should always show up down in this lower right hand portion of the page. You might have to you might have to scroll down a little bit to find it, but it should be there. And every video that I post will be labeled accordingly, you know, chapter two, part three, chapter five, part one, etc. And so you can access uh, any of these subsections. I'll go ahead and click on uniform circular motion. So this is that subsection for chapter five. And basically, you can read through this. It's got all the, all the course material there, all the definitions, all of the equations. And from time to time, they'll also throw in uh, some example problems that you can play with. And some of those are also interactive. So do, do take full advantage of everything that is available to you through this, through this site. And then when the homework assignments are posted, um, each of the homework sites will show up here. You'll click on the homework site. It will then show you a page with the policies for that homework set. Basically, it just says when the homework set opens, when it's going to close, and uh, what, what kind of uh, access that you have. Uh, based on uh, attempts, you will have unlimited attempts on these homework problems. Um, the reason for that is because a lot of these homework problems will have multiple parts to it or multiple steps. And it's just a lot easier to do the first part of the problem, hit submit, see if you got it right, and then move on to the next part of the problem. That way, if, if you have a problem that has like six parts to it, um, it's, it's not unreasonable to see a student that has six, eight, ten attempts on that one problem. But if I see that a student has like 50 or 100 attempts on a problem, then, then there's an issue. Either the student has absolutely no idea what's going on and they need some help, or they're abusing the system and they're, they're fishing for answers. And if it, if it comes to that point where I feel that people are abusing the unlimited attempts, I can scale those back to something more reasonable like five or 10 attempts per problem. Once you start submitting materials to your homework sets, if you get the right answer, Wiley will highlight it in green and it will be saved. You won't be able to change it but anything that is wrong will be highlighted in red and then you'll have the, the option of uh, inputting a different answer. If you hover your cursor over one of those uh, entry boxes, Wiley will often have certain restrictions like um, there may be a percent error that is allowed. So you may have like a 2% error that is allowed on any given number that you plug in. So just 
just as an example, if, if the answer to a given problem was 100 and the, the allowable error was 2%, then Wiley should accept anything between 98 and 102. But Wiley may also have other restrictions like significant figures. And so you need, to, you need to keep an eye on what those restrictions are because I've had plenty of students that are doing the physics correct. They're just not paying attention to what those restrictions are when, when they go to submit their answers. And so once you do get something right, the gradebook will start tracking uh, the points that you've earned up to 600. Um, I will eventually have that extra credit assignment available. When I, when I put the extra credit assignment into Wiley, Wiley will track in excess of 600 points. Now, don't worry about that. Wiley has to have something to track. And so even though it looks like your, your final grade is out of more than 600, at the end of the semester, I will only be taking what, what points you have earned versus 600. Uh, the, and so since we don't have any homework assignments open right now, I can't really show you the grade book. But the, the final link here that you can access is Orion. And this is actually a, a separate software system where you can basically go in and take practice quizzes. There's, there is a quiz for each chapter. And these, these quizzes are mostly multiple choice questions. And so it works, it works out really well to use this as a practice for the exams. But if you, if you click on one of these chapters, um, here you'll notice chapter one, we've got one of 20 questions. And the way that, the way that Orion is set up is, first of all, it wants to know down here, what is your confidence level with this material? And you look up here and you say, well, we have a sphere. This is the radius of the sphere. They want to know the volume of the sphere. And you're like, oh, okay, I can, I can look up the volume of the sphere. I, I feel really confident with this problem. And then you go and you do your, your calculations and you select your answer. And um, so I don't know... You know, I haven't I haven't sat down and done the calculations yet, but I'm just going to guess, and I'll say B, and then I'll hit submit. Now up here, you have a couple of different um, information boxes that tell you, um, first of all, how hard or easy this question is, versus whether or not you got it right or wrong versus how you score against all of the other students nationwide that have used this software. So I've, I've just guessed, I'm gonna hit submit and oh, well, I got it wrong because it gave me this, this red bar. And it said that out of, out of the difficulty level, um, Let's see, that was, that was for previous. It was something like 70% of students got it right. And so now there's a new question. You'll notice, even though it said I got the problem wrong, it didn't tell me what the right answer was. And that can be a little aggravating, but this is another reason why Orion makes for a good practice for an exam because when you go through and you take that exam, you get one chance to pick the answer and you're not gonna know what the correct answer is until you get the exam back. Likewise with this, you're gonna, you're gonna hit, you're gonna select an answer. Well, you'll know whether you got it right or wrong, but you won't know what the correct answer is if you got the problem wrong. So what I would recommend is um, 
once we get closer to the midterm exam, go back to the chapter two, chapter three, chapter four, chapter five material, however much of this material uh, is going to be on that midterm exam. And I, I will update you later in the, the semester as to exactly what material to expect on the exam. But access, access the, the quizzes from those chapters and maybe do five problems from each chapter. And that'll, that'll get you close to, you know, well, let's see, that'll be about 20 to 25 questions, multiple choice questions. Give yourself 90 minutes, see how you do. And then you can come back and you can do another five questions from each chapter. Give yourself about 90 minutes, see how you do. And that'll kind of that'll kind of give you an idea as to uh, what you can expect for your performance on that test. And as you go through, if you if you do get a problem wrong, go back and check in Wiley Plus the material that relates to that particular problem, and that'll that'll tell you what material that you need to focus your studies on before you you come back and take the test. So that's Wiley Plus. Next, I want to take a look at D2L. So we'll click on the course link there. Um, I, I believe that all courses are now required to be linked through D2L. So if you started at D2L, uh, here's a copy of the syllabus. Here's a link to the course page where we have everything. Here's a link to Wiley Plus. So basically everything has a link to everything else with the exception of Wiley. I don't, I don't have links back to the course page or to D2L through Wiley. And I have, I have not yet posted any quizzes to D2L but you will find those quizzes under the assessments tab. You'll come down here, you'll click on quizzes, and once a quiz has been made available, you should see it, you'll be able to access it, take the quiz, and then uh, I will have those quizzes import grades to the gradebook on D2L. And then at the end of the semester, I will just take the grand total for those quizzes and I will import them into the gradebook for Wiley Plus. So at, at any point during this semester between Wiley Plus and the D2L gradebook, you will know uh, just how many points you have earned during the course of the semester. And so there's really not much else um, that we're going to be using D2L4. I'm trying to keep the majority of it on Wiley Plus, but because D2L is a requirement for use in this class, um, that's why we have our syllabus here. And as I said, uh, D2L has so far been easier for me to produce quizzes on than Wiley Plus. So um, I want to I want to get in this extra learning experience for myself using D2L. All right, so that is going to conclude this video. Um, I, I suggest that you go ahead, read through that syllabus again on your own, print off a copy of those formula sheets for use, and then uh, check back to Wiley Plus first day of class. Um, oops, for some reason that link didn't work. Hmm. Okay, so I guess I'll have to check that out, but that's why we have the backup. That's why we have the, the course link here. So remember to check back to Wiley Plus and under the read study practice in the lower right hand section is where I will have those videos posted. 
and get in touch with me anytime. Um, as I said, I'll try to try to check my emails as often as possible. Uh, but if it is a if it is a, a time dependent issue and I don't get back to you in time, uh, we'll just say that that's my fault and. I'm, I'm always willing to, to give the benefit of, it, of the doubt on things like that. All right, so have a good weekend and hope to see each of you at least uh, once during a Zoom session. If not, have a great summer. But uh, please, even if it's just to, to dial in and say hello so I can, so I can see all of your happy, smiling faces because... I know physics always brings a smile to everyone's face. All right. Have a good one.